Today, we've got the majestic legendary Pokemon from the Kalos region, Xerneas. The mascot of Pokemon X and the embodiment of life itself, this member of Gen 6's Aura Trio has a rich design, a stag in the shape of an X, with basis in both Norse and Celtic mythology. Its encounter in Pokemon X is majestic, and it had a starring role in the movie Diancie and the Cocoon of Destruction. Let's not stall any further as we've got a lot ahead of us. And so, we'll ask right away, how good was Xerneas actually? And in this video, we'll be going over these competitive formats. From day one of XY, Xerneas instantly became the biggest threat in Ubers. Forget Kyogre, forget any form of Arceus, no. Xerneas was such an unbelievably dangerous threat, such an instantaneous game ender, that it made everything else look fit for NU play by comparison. You might not immediately guess why when you first glance at Xerneas though. Something like Kyogre is obvious, but Xerneas? Base 131 special attack was superb, nobody could argue otherwise, but by Uber standards, it wasn't exactly bringing the house down. Its speed was good too, but nothing overwhelming. Its bulk was quite impressive too, but still nothing that was going to stun on par with Uber's great walls Lugia and Giratina. It had quite a fierce offensive move pool, but stab Moonblast accentuated with solid coverage and even aromatherapy. But what was the big deal? Well, first of all, Xerneas's Fairy Aura ability meant that as far as its Moonblast went, it was a lot stronger than base 131 special attack, as Fairy Aura boosted Fairy moves by 33%. In other words, it was a little stronger than the boost from Life Orb. Second of all, it also had its signature move Geomancy, and this is what made it such a tear-toppling terror. Geomancy was basically a doubled quiver dance. It provided plus two special attack, special defense, and speed. Shame about the drawback, which is that it takes two turns to set up. Oh, never mind. You can give Xerneas a power herb, which means that the two-turn effect is gone. Xerneas gets that doubled quiver dance in one turn, and the game is probably over. Power herb's effect was one time, but that was all Xerneas needed. It turns out when you've got a plus two stab Moonblast coming off base 131 special attack that also has a boost stronger than life orb on top of that and you're faster than choice scarfers not much is going to stop you who'd have thought fairy resists yeah those tended to get destroyed by xerneas's coverage moves at plus two the uber's player base was in a constant state of panic trying to figure out how to stop xerneas checks existed yes most famously and effectively clef key a uu pokemon that happened to be perfectly tooled to stifle xerneas through its typing bulk and priority thunder wave xerneas couldn't even avoid the t waves through substitute as clef Key's play rough was boosted by Fairy Aura and would break it. However, just because checks existed didn't mean that dealing with Xerneas wasn't obscenely difficult, as they were always on the Razor's Edge, needing to remain in perfect condition, and sometimes even that wasn't enough, as Xerneas could adapt his moveset and blow them away one way or another. For instance, even Clef Key would become setup fodder for Rest Talk Xerneas. Clef Key had to begin running Heal Block for this. If you weren't running Clef Key, however, your check was probably at risk of getting destroyed by coverage. Ho oh would get thundered, Arceus Steel and Ferrothorn would get focus blasted, status users would be shrugged off with aromatherapy, and so on and so forth. There were only so many Xerneas checks one could reasonably fit on a team, and since stopping Xerneas from setting up was absurdly difficult, given its amazing typing and bulk, well, you would often wind up losing the sun variant with very little or nothing you could do about it. Pick your poison, and hope it's not in Xerneas's moveset, or try to keep your team healthy enough to not get bowled over by its sheer strength, because when push came to shove, nothing was better at shoving than Xerneas. As an example of how everything had to adapt and try to slow Xerneas down throughout XY, the Kyogre checking Palkia absolutely had to run Thunder Wave to stifle any Geomancy attempts. Not only could this cause problems when Xerneas was paired with Kyogre, forced to T-Wave Xerneas with Palkia, it Moonblast, there went your Kyogre answer, but it wouldn't even work against Aromatherapy Xerneas. So you pretty much just had to hope and pray it wasn't that set, and if it was, tough luck. There was massive public outcry of Xerneas's brokenness as the player base did everything imaginable to try and slow it down. Each tactic that seemed useful would quickly see Xerneas turn the tables. For instance, Sand Rush Extra Drill under Sand was a great check until Xerneas slapped on a timid nature and Extra Drill was blasted away. To say nothing of the fact that even against the standard modest variants, unless one managed to get opposing Xerneas to set up in Sand, a rarity, one would still lose a Pokemon before Extra Drill came in for the revenge kill. Incidentally, Xerneas didn't need to run Geomancy. It was actually one of the best Scarfers in the tier as well, with its great speed, bulk, 
and viciously strong Moonblast, making it a superb Pokemon to have on your side in the late game. And the unexpected speed and proclivity to immediately attack could ruin Pokemon expecting Geomancy and staying in to try and punish Xerneas as it's set up. Xerneas could also run an outstanding defensive Rest Talk set on bulky teams that fully leaned into its hit taking ability to leverage Aromatherapy. This was crucial given how many defensive teams' primary method of forcing progress against each other was toxic. Even without Geomancy, Xerneas would have been excellent, but of course, with Geomancy, it had players crying for its ban from Ubers. Remember, this is pre Mega Rayquaza. Such a move was unprecedented at the time, but Xerneas' threat level was sufficient to lead the idea of credence amongst top players. This was no scrub complaining that Kyogre was too strong, the likes of which get shrugged off as a sign of not understanding the game. This was the real deal. Speaking of Mega Ray, Oras rolled around, and after the initial chaos that led to the creation of Anything Goes, you'd think, okay, Mega Ray created a precedent, right? Would Xerneas follow it? Well, not quite, because Oras also brought with it a new number one Pokemon, Primal Groudon, and with it, it's half fire typing, it gained the resistance to Xerneas' Moonblast, and it could survive a plus two hidden power ground as well, meaning that pretty much every team would now have a built-in Xerneas check before adding another Xerneas check like Klefki. As such, defending against Xerneas now became more reasonable. Emphasis on the more. Whether or not it was fully reasonable remains a subject of debate. Players no longer complained about how difficult it was to fit Xerneas checks that were also a decent Pokemon on their team. Instead, the qualm became the difficulty of keeping Primal Groudon healthy enough to withstand a plus two Focus Blast since it lacked leftovers. Still, dealing with Xerneas was now palatable, as palatable as dealing with such a Pokemon was going to get anyway, and it was no longer as universally feared and despised now that the tier was more focused on dealing with not just Primal Groudon, but also Mega Salamence. Having said that, the existence of these two actually helped Xerneas out because their ludicrous power left shattered remains in their wake, which Xerneas had an even easier time cleaning up, or vice versa, with Xerneas opening the game for them. Surprisingly though it may seem, taking on all Primal Groudon, Mega Salamence, and Xerneas was nearly impossible, especially when they were also paired with Extreme Killer Arceus, and paired with Dark Rise Vicious Dark Void. All in all, you just couldn't stop Xerneas. It always find a way around your tricks, whether it was through sub tricks of its own or brute force. Yeah, Primal Groudon could be used on every single team and whatever, but when it came down to it, the most dangerous teams were the ones with Xerneas. One cannot overemphasize enough the stranglehold Xerneas had on the metagame in from day one. Gen 6 Ubers was basically Xerneas the tier. The atmosphere was fraught with tense anticipation as the restricted Pokemon were allowed for VGC 2016, and Xerneas was among the most terrifying of threats, players dreading the prospect of facing or relishing the prospect of abusing it, or both. It immediately became a metagame staple with its Geomancy set, which was just as much of a game ender in doubles as singles. It was so strong it didn't even need coverage, just needing to hit as much as possible with its brutally strong fairy coverage. So it usually used two of them. Good old Moonblast, of course, but what if you needed to hit both opposing Pokemon simultaneously? Never fear, that's what Dazzling Gleam is for. Despite the power drop off from Moonblast, Dazzling Gleam was still more than strong enough to drop most opposing Pokemon thanks to Xerneas' titanic special attack alongside the plus two Geomancy boost and of course, Fairy Aura. And with support from the spread target sleep of Smeargle's Dark Void, as well as other superb utility moves like Fake Out, Follow Me, and Wide Guard, setting up Geomancy was even more of a cinch. Xerneas was part of the so-called Big Six, a set of six Pokemon crammed together, as many of the most monstrous combinations of broken Pokemon could fit on one team. Alongside Xerneas was its trusty pal Smeargle, as well as Primal Groudon, Mega Salamence, Mega Kangaskhan, and Talonflame. This set of six was brutally difficult to counter throughout the season, even if you knew what was coming. It was particularly due to the potential for versatility the team had, of course, but much of it was also just sheer overwhelming power, and much of that came from Xerneas' ability to end games on the spot, with Xerneas' incredible power on all sorts of teams, not just the big six, it was no surprise that his usage was through the roof. Thus, as with other such Pokemon like Landorus, Therian, and Primal Groudon, we have limited its pre-world's placements to first place. Those placements are as follows. Sam Pandelis at the Adelaide Regionals, Michael Reichert at the South African Nationals, Martin Lurumbe at the Sydney Regionals, Niho Noor at the Melbourne Regionals, Javier Senorena, Italian Nationals, Chase Leibert at the US Nationals, Phil Nguyen at the Australian Nationals, 
Ian McLaughlin at the Orlando Regionals, Jamie Boy at the Liverpool Regionals, whose Xerneas was paired with Cottony of all things, Ze Juan Huang, Philadelphia Regionals, and Dane Zyman, Fort Wayne Regionals. At Worlds, we've limited its placements to just the top eight. By some strange miracle, Xerneas didn't win the whole thing or even placed in the top three, but it was still a dominant, prominent presence. In that top eight, it took fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh places used by Eduardo Cunha, Aaron Trailer, Justin Karras, and Barry Anderson. Aaron Trailer using a bold Xerneas with tons of physical ball. All in all, Xerneas was one of the most powerful, defining forces of the 2016 season of VGC, ranking up there as among the best of the best restricted Pokemon. Xerneas returned to Generation 7 Ubers and continued to do exactly what it had beforehand. Oh, big deal. Specially defensive Magirna existed and was a much better answer than Klefki. Be that as it may, Xerneas still towered over pretty much everything else, and the Magirna user had to be seriously careful to not get whittled down and unable to withstand such mighty hits, which was not an unreasonable proposition for the Xerneas player, given Magirna's lack of reliable recovery and how it was also tasked on with taking other threats Xerneas could be paired with like Nala. Plus, the metagame was just rife with more Pokemon for Xerneas to rip through. Like Zygarde complete, more like Zygarde completely destroyed by Moonblast, new bulky Moonblast resists and Toxapex and Celesteela, more like Thundered Pex and Celest Thundered. Okay, those weren't as good, but you get the gist. Xerneas was its same old self, which is to say, an utter terror and a fixture on hyper offense. It had an amazing new toy to play with in Gen 7 too. The addition of Z-moves allowed it to equip a Ferium Z and run Z Geomancy. Now, this didn't have the charge turn removal of power herb so z geomancy would take two turns but the effect was absolutely absurd it would receive plus three in each of special attack special defense and speed and it would get a defense boost the latter paired with a bold nature and maximum defense investment meant Xerneas was absolutely unkillable on what was its one quasi weak spot its physical defense not that its defense was low of course it was anything but especially with its huge hp but traditionally you would attempt to target that as opposed to its geo boosted special defense now you'd be completely hapless though forget revenge killing it with mega lucario's bullet punch or blasting through it with ho -Oh and with rest even statusing it wouldn't help xerneas could even run ingrain on such a set so forget phasing it out that said sleep talk was also an excellent option since it couldn't call geomancy and thus gave xerneas a 50 percent chance of calling moon blast in its sleep ultra sun and moon came around and brought with it another great pokemon that also checked xerneas in the krasma dusk main it even had reliable healing in Morning Sun. However, as good as Duskmane was, it still wasn't anything that Xerneas couldn't potentially bowl over late game if it were supported and played well. Sure, nobody was calling for Xerneas' ban anymore, but they were also still spamming the daylights out of it, despite it being easier to check than ever. Being easy to check didn't mean that it was easy to check when in the hands of a capable player. Xerneas continued to be a hyper offense staple throughout the generation, doing what it always did. The Choice Scarf set also picked up in popularity as players noticed just how much of a force it was late game, as it was easily able to check the terrifying likes of Ultra Necrozma, as well as being able to withstand Marshadow's Technician's Shadow Sneaks, while also generally apt at threatening opposing teams with an immediately fast, powerful Moonblast. It came to be considered one of the very best Scarfers in the tier. Its Scarf set also had a new form of utility, Defog. Xerneas had picked the move up in Ultra Sun and Moon, and could now take advantage of the many switches it forced to clear the field of hazards for the benefit of teammates like Mega Salamence and Ho-Oh. This was in addition to being able to do the same with aromatherapy, a scar for that, in addition to effortlessly checking major threats and cleaning late game, was also a cleric and hazard remover. Scarf Xerneas really was the whole package. And of course, an opponent getting too comfortable against Xerneas they thought was Scarf would be punished like no other when it used Geomancy instead. All in all, despite gaining major checks, Xerneas continued to thrive in Generation 7. Xerneas returned to VGC in the 2019 season Sun Series. Even with Dark Void's nerf, meaning Smeargle could no longer support it as it had before, it remains in utter terror, doing pretty much exactly what it always did regardless of format. And even without Smeargle's help, there were plenty of other excellent support methods to ensure it got its Geomancy off and smashed all in its path, such as Rage Powder Amoongus and Incineroar with Fake Out and Intimidate. Xerneas's efficacy was evidenced in its enormous popularity. In the Sun Series, according to Picolytics, 
from Pokemon Showdown statistics, Xerneas was top four in usage, being seen on 38% of teams. In the Moon series, it was second in usage at a stunning 58%, and in the Ultra series, it was third, coming in at 39%. It had a plethora of success, as was fitting for such a hugely popular Pokemon. It often paired with Groudon and then Primal Groudon once again. Xerneas often ran bulkier and bulkier sets to withstand hits from monsters like Ultra Necrozma and Mega Rayquaza, and it was so difficult to stop with raw damage that Pokemon began running Roar, an otherwise useless move in the format, just to try and stifle its Geomancy. Not that this slowed Xerneas down much, of course, given the support it often had such as Redirection, Fake Out, and Taunt, especially once players became wise to such strategies. Xerneas was so excellent, will once again be only covering first places before Worlds. The players on screen made first place at their respective regional or higher events. Yeah, wow, that's a lot. But again, shockingly, Xerneas didn't reach the top two at Worlds. However, it was still incredibly present and successful there. In the top eight, James Bank reached third and Steven Mia reached eighth. And it was everywhere beyond that. So overall, Xerneas had another incredibly successful generation of VGC. Xerneas joined the 8th generation in the Crown Tundra, and it was scarier than ever. Yeah, so it lost the hidden power it would occasionally use, and it could no longer use Ferium Z Geomancy sets. But who cares? Neither was essential, and it was a trade Xerneas would make gleefully in exchange for the advantages it got, which was the fact that Megas, Z Crystals, and even the Primals had been removed from the game, meaning that the rest of the tier was far less powerful than Xerneas. They'd hit it less hard, and they wouldn't take its hits as well. To say nothing of the fact it lost a major blanket check with the absence of Primal Groudon. As an uber that already dwarfed most other ubers, Xerneas was perfectly poised to have another dominant generation, and that's exactly what it did. Some things never go out of style, and Geomancy Xerneas is one of them. Nor did Defensive and Scarf Xerneas slow down much for that matter, which contributed to Xerneas' incredible viability and usage. Even if your team wasn't the style that would really appreciate its boosting talents, it almost surely would have some use for one of the other two sets, as they covered such an enormous portion of the meta game. The Scarfer had an amazing speed tier for the meta, getting the jump on other Scarfers in Galarian, Darmanitan, and Kyogre, as well as the Dragon Dance boosted Zekrom, Zygarde, and Rayquaza, to say nothing of his usual capabilities of smacking the likes of Mewtwo, Marshadow, as well as tier newcomers Calyrex, Shadow, Offensive Eternatus, Urshifu, and Weavile. Meanwhile, the defensive portion took on such Pokemon more directly, switching into and answering them, as was needed on the bulky teams it found itself on. As great as Xerneas was in these roles, it was still at its best and most dangerous with Geomancy, which, well, did what it always did. Not much really changed in that regard. It still got its one turn of boosting and obliterated all in sight. It may seem slight, but Xerneas was simple yet strong. It was one of the best, most defining Pokemon in Ubers for the third consecutive generation. Xerneas was introduced in Series 8, but the presence of Zacian Crown, which both checked and outclassed it, meant Xerneas was for the first time ever not much of a factor in VGC, despite its status as a restricted Pokemon, and despite the incredible potential of Dynamax. Another limiting factor was that teams were only allowed one restricted Pokemon, and Xerneas was difficult to justify as their sole choice in this new Zacian Crown metagame. It wasn't outright bad, of course, and had a handful of uses, but it was no longer a meta a game defining threat. Placements included the following Gonzalo Padilla and Alex Williams, 11th and 13th, respectively, at the second Winter's VR Circuit Qualifier, and Li Chun Tian and Chang Yu Xiang, 5th and 14th, respectively, at the Kao Xiong Regionals. Series 10 was much of the same, more or less passing Xerneas by with only a few sparse uses. Lacey L at 12 at the second Hatterene Series Tournament, Paul Ruiz and Sajin Park 3rd, and tied for 7th, respectively, at the Players' Cup 25th Anniversary Invitational, and 
and Ko Sukide, Giulio Tarlau, Kestrel Strom, and Andrea Pagano with 6, 13, 15, and 26 respectively at the World Cup Open. Things open up for Xerneas big time in Series 12 as two restricted Pokemon were allowed then, which made it a lot easier to slot in on a team. It still wasn't going to reach its past dominance, but it was much better with this newfound flexibility and its uptick in usage reflected this. It still wasn't the most common as Zacian Crown was absurdly dominant, but Xerneas had its place. It had the following placements. Yuta Takahashi, 26 at the VR GG Tour Series 12 Challenge, Event Horizon, who got 10th at the 4th Hatterene Series, Thidi Pong, Arunrungrat, and Shuji Endo, 19th and 31st respectively at the Victory Road to Frankfurt, Chayua Triwacha, who won the Thailand Nationals, Austin Anderson, who got 62nd at the North American Internationals, and Iker Rodrigo, 8th at the Victoria Road to Columbus. So all in all, not the worst generation, considering the worst thing imaginable is pre-nerf Zacian crowns showing up. And that's it, so how good was Xerneas actually? Well, ever since it first showed up in XY, Geomancy Xerneas has been one of the most terrifying threats in a tier famous for housing the most terrifying threats. Geomancy Xerneas was far and away the scariest thing in that tier. It quote unquote slowed down an Ores, which yes, technically it did, thanks to Primal Groudon, but that just meant it had to work a little harder before it destroyed everything in sight. The same applied for it gaining Magirna and the Necrozma Dustmane as checks in Gen 7 and 8. Funnily enough, it didn't even need to use Geomancy to be an amazing Pokemon. It could go defensive quite well, and its Scarf set was particularly apt at checking opposing threats and cleaning late game. Though a world title somehow eluded it, Xerneas has also been incredibly powerful, metagame shaping, and successful when it has been allowed in VGC, despite a slower Gen 8 in lieu of the introduction of Zacian Crown. All in all, Xerneas is one of the best Pokemon of all time, truly inspiring the fear and awe appropriate for a box legendary. Thanks for watching, everyone. Everyone. And as always, if you like the video and you want to see more, be sure to subscribe to False Swipe Gaming for more weekly Pokemon content. And in the comments, I want to know what do you think about competitive Xerneas? How would you change it? Whatever it is, let me know in the comments. Also, thank you so much to our patrons for continued support of our videos. And thank you to everyone else watching as well. And follow my crew on these social media platforms. And that's all I got. See you next time, everyone.